Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today we're gonna print a gun. But not just any gun. The Halo Magnum. I said, what you looking at, punk? Alright guys, I have the model open here in Cura 13.12 and it's actually the Halo Magnum is a single pistol, like this is just printed as one single piece. I went ahead and flipped the pistol upside down in Cura just to make it easier to print and I added a brim and a raft. So if you go over here and you say I want to see the layers, you can see it builds out each of the layers of the pistol and you can see how it's going to be printed. You can break it down to its furthest level. So it's basically going to create a brim layer, then print the entire pistol in any place there's an overhang, it's going to actually print support material. Alright, so just to give you an example, here I have a cube that I printed using ColorFab XT, which is a wonderful material, and you can see that there's a huge overhang here. Well, obviously it can't just print material out in open space because gravity pulls it down because it comes out in a molten state. So what it's going to do is it's going to print a lattice structure using a minimal amount of material to basically create like a scaffolding to hold the materials that's printing it up here. Now in this particular example here, I didn't use any support material and you can see there's all kinds of like little droopies and stuff under here. It actually did a remarkable job considering the size of this cube, uh, which they call it bridging, when you can go between two points like that over open air. And I'm very, very satisfied with how the material works. But using that support material can really make the difference between a good print and a great print. So again, the material that we're using this time is going to be ColorFab XT. Now the cool thing about this material is standard PLA has a maximum melting temperature of about 230C. The problem with that is the material tends to stay very liquid all the way down to about 190, so it takes longer to cool and solidify. And during that time, the material can shift and move, which can affect your print quality. This, you can print all the way up to 260. C. Very, very high temperature, and I think the low point's about 240 that you want to print out. Oh, actually about 220. So they list 220 to 240, but actually I was printing at 260, and I was getting a pretty good result. But the nice thing about that is, because it has a higher melting point, it cools down that much faster when it's printing, which for things like bridging and stuff like that is an absolute necessity. This is cool material. Alright, I've transferred this model over to an SD card, so let's take it over to the Ultimaker 2 and print it out. All right, so here we have the completed Halo Magnum pistol. All I've done is I've removed the support material. When you noticed, when it printed on the printer, there was a lot of like material built up in all the little crevices around here and on the bottom. And you can see where this is really rough. You know, I'm gonna have to hit that with a file or some sandpaper to get it smooth because when you remove the support material, of course, it's, it's molten plastic, you know, touching plastic. So when you tear it off, you tend to get a little bit of a rough spot. But the cool thing about this uh, XT material is it files and sands really nicely. So all it's gonna take is a bit of sandpaper and some files to clean all that up and make it look nice. Now, one thing I did notice when I printed this was that a lot of this roughness could have been avoided just by turning the temperature down a little. I think I was printing at too high of a temperature and it was causing the support material to bond just a little bit too good with the base material. But you can look at the inlays here where there was no support material. It's very, very sharp. The lines are very, very crisp. The detail where it needs to be, like on the fins in the side here, this all looks absolutely beautiful. So to be honest, I probably should have printed this without any support material and it would have turned out better. But I'm still very, very happy with the results. This is my very first print using ColorFab XT white material. And it performs really well and it prints at high temperature. And as I play with it, I'm going to mess with the retraction settings. I'm going to play around with the temperatures on the printer. And just like with anything else 3D printing, you have to play with the printer to get the material to print just perfectly. But once you get the settings dialed in and you got them written down, printing in that anything in that material is a dream. All right, we've established that the Halo Magnum pistol, when you print it as a single piece from the model, 
Um, it feels a little bit small. You can see my hand here. I can only get about three fingers in the trigger guard. And it looks like it was intentionally created small so that you could print it as a single piece on the printer. It's not really to scale. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the gun broken up into multiple parts. And this was included with the model package. You can get the link in the description. Um, and this is all individual parts. So here's all the parts to build the handle for the pistol. And this is for people that are trying to print this out on printers that have lesser build volume. So what you do is you can print these out and then cut them out and glue them together and make larger versions of what you normally couldn't print as a single piece. But there's huge advantages to this. One is, if you look at some of the pieces here, you can change the orientation of the pieces so that they print uh, with the cleanest possible outcome because you don't want a lot of overhangs. So if you can print this stuff where it doesn't have a lot of overhangs, like if I switch over to my layer view here, you actually get a much cleaner print. And then when you glue the parts together, you have better seams, better angles, and it doesn't look so chewed up where you had to remove all the support material. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and print these two with zero support, because this we had to remove a bunch of support material. I'm gonna print these with zero support, and then we're gonna cut them out and glue them together. But then just to make it a little bit bigger, because I want it to fit my hand, I'm scaling it up by 25%, which I've already done on both of these models. Easy to do in Kure, you, set, you change one setting. You basically say, I want to increase it by 0.25%, boom, it's going to be bigger. So let's go ahead and get this printed out, and then we'll assemble it, and we'll compare it. and this is the 25% larger scaled up version of the Halo Magnum. So now all we have to do is break the parts out of this sheet. Now, this model came with the sheet intact, but you can also print stuff like this by actually telling the printer to add a brim to it, but they just went ahead and incorporated it into the model. So I'm gonna go ahead and just break all this stuff away. It's fairly easy to break away. The material's brittle enough. Let's go ahead and we can clean up the edges later on. So there's one piece right there. There's another piece. I can see here that it does need some cleanup along the bottom edge. It did tend to droop, and that's because I didn't print with any support. So it did get a little bit frayed up, but I can clean that up. Okay, I've roughly broken out all the pieces, so now we're going to go ahead and clean them up using uh, a pen knife. This is my cool little uh, Master Grip tool set that I picked up from Costco that has a series of pen knives and blades and just really nice tools for carving and whittling. And I find uh, for 3D printed stuff and cleaning up support material, this is actually an ideal set to have. So at this point we have all the parts cleaned up. I went ahead and filed them a little bit 
and uh, cut the edges down. So now they're pretty clean for the most part. So now we're just gonna use some hot glue to put it all together. Now, I may wanna use something more permanent like epoxy or melt them together um, in the future, but in case I wanna take it apart again and mess with it or cleaned up more, I'm just using hot glue because it's more temporary. So let's go ahead and start out with the grip here. Let's go ahead and just put a little, little glue down here on the bottom, just like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the bottom piece here and we're gonna put in the actual grip holder, just like that. Go ahead and pin those together. Okay, so now let's go ahead and assemble the slide which, let's see here, goes like this, and that goes like that. Let's see, is that right? That looks about right. And then this goes on the front. I just wanna lay it out in my head here so we get it right. All right, I think we're good. I can double check it against the smaller version too, just to make sure it's correct. That does actually look correct. So let's go ahead and glue that together. And you can see it's already the model's already notched. It has some little joints here, so we'll just go ahead and fill those in with glue. Just like so. Again, there's a another little notch. Let's go ahead and fill that little compartment with glue. I love hot glue. You can use this stuff for everything. Temporary assembly, you can use it for like I glue my uh, network routers and stuff to the underside of my desk. It works really, really well. All right. So there we have the slide glued together. So now, we want to put the grip on it. Put a little hot glue there. God, I love hot glue. Okay, piece that right there. Okay, push it really hard. Hot glue sets up pretty quick too. It's another cool property about it. So now you can see it's starting to come together. So now, we want to put this on the front. Big misconception with 3D printers is that you can only print what the build volume of the printer will let you print. That's actually not true. You could print out a full-size full car if you wanted to. You just have to glue it together a piece at a time. And they make cool uh, software. Like I have a piece of software called NetFab. You guys can check it out. I'll have a link in the description. And NetFab is a very, very easy program that allows you to take really large models and slice them into manageable parts that you can then print and then glue back together and it works really well. Now you can see there, the gun's starting to shape up. It's actually very, very large, comfortable to hold. This is definitely more realistic size. I might've even gone just a little bit too big on it, but it's an awesome gun. I don't care if it's too big. So now that we got that piece done, let's go ahead and set that down for a second. Now I wanna check my slide. The glue's set up on the slide, so we're good there. So let's go ahead and glue the slide on. This thing is huge. I didn't expect it honestly to be this big. And it looks like the front piece here. It looks like there was a pin uh, to hold those two pieces together, but I forgot to cut it out, but we're just gonna glue it because we don't, we don't need the pin since we're just gluing everything. Getting glue happy here. All right, put that on the front. Let's see, that looks correct. Starting, starting to shape up and look like a gun here, people. Gosh, that thing's huge. All right, now the only thing left to do is to put the two screws in the front here. Go ahead and let that dry so I can clean up the excess glue. But there you have it. The Halo Magnum all glued together. And just to give you some size comparison, <laughs> it's quite a bit bigger. I personally like the larger one. Now, now these cracks here, all this stuff, once the glue dries, if I want to, I can fill all that in with Bondo, like auto body filler, sand it all down and paint it and it'll all look like one piece. So. And another thing you can do too is once you do that work and you smooth it out and you take your time finishing everything, then you can actually plaster cast it and make other ones and just pour, you, you can actually pour as many as you want just out of actual plastic and make them solid if you want. It's really cool stuff. Well, there you guys have it. The 12.7 millimeter automatic Halo Magnum pistol. Now this is the small one. This was printed 100% of the model that I noticed when I printed is a little bit you know, small for my hand. Uh, but this was printed as one piece with support as you saw earlier in the video. And it turned out pretty good. There's some rough spots on top where uh, 
the support material contacted it and didn't tear away cleanly. But again, with 3D printing, it's all about tweaking and like finding the right settings for your environment, the temperature, humidity, everything. If I play around with the retraction settings and the temperature for this material, I should be able to get it to where the support material cleanly breaks away. So I'm gonna experiment with that. This is my first print using XT and I'm actually really happy with the results that I got for my first time printing with a brand new material that uses a different temperature range. Both of these were printed on the Ultimaker V2 printer, which is a phenomenal printer. I also have an Ultimaker V1, which does a really good job, but having a heated bed is fantastic when you're dealing with materials like this. It just makes them adhere better and it prevents warping. So since this didn't fit my hand very well, we went ahead and parted out this piece, which the link is in the description to both models, the, the full size one that's just a single piece and then the one that's multiple pieces. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 pieces here that are all hot glued together. All I did was clean up the edges to take off the brim material and cleaned up a little bit. But you can see this is 125% scale. That is a big pistol. That fits my hand, all my fingers fit comfortably in the grip. And that's way more realistic as far as size is concerned. Um, so this is the one that I would actually use. It looks like they just scaled the model down mainly uh, to just, just make it you know easier to print on a smaller printer with a smaller build volume. But again, that is just too cool. Now the neat thing is because you can glue the parts together, you, you could even go bigger. I mean, actually, I'm thinking after doing this, I love how this turned out. So I want to print a full size like energy rifle or whatever the hell it's called, the, the Halo assault rifle. I want to print that next because I think that would be cool to make something that's large. And like I was saying earlier, if you want to finish the model to like showroom quality, once you're done printing it, again, a lot of these rough patches and stuff like this could be avoided just by playing around with the temperature and finding the exact right settings. Again, this is Color Fab XT material. It's a new material that I'm beta testing. And so I gotta find those proper settings to get it to work perfect. But right now, as it sits, the, br the bridging on it's phenomenal. I mean, the fact that it can actually bridge across a gap that big with minimal sag, that's, that, that's mind blowing to me because usually with PLA, it would just be like, <laughs> I mean, it would just be a loop. So I'm really happy with the material. It cuts very easy. It actually whittles a lot like wood, the way that the material comes away which PLA doesn't really whittle that well. And it's very, very sandable. So it's a very workable material for making things. But once you're done, fill in all the cracks with Bondo, finish it up, sand it, prime it, get in there, do all that detail work. And I'm probably gonna do that with this with my friend Rob from the 501st Legion. We'll clean this up and then make it a castable. Once it's all clean and smooth, then we can cast that, make a mold, pour as many of them as we want for pennies on the dollar very quickly, paint them up, and they'll be awesome. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun for me. It was cool to be able to print like a couple of the same thing. And the Halo theme is really big right now. As you guys know, I'm also working on a Halo helmet, a full-size Master Chief helmet from Halo 4. And that helmet right now, it's done. I've already printed, I think it was 24 pieces I had to print and assemble. And right now my friend Rob has that and he's doing all the Bondo work and, and, and cleaning it all up so that we can actually do a mold and print latex versions of them. It's gonna be really, really cool, guys. So keep an eye out for that video. So guys, hope this gave you a nerdgasm. Until next time. Surprise, bitches. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.